Hello and welcome back to Boring Dad Gaming, where today we're going to be playing some more Rogue Trader. We have, well, we're still exploring some uh, systems and we've come across this planet, which None has allowed us better at searching. to land. Ooh, we've been locked in. <laughs> okay, we didn't really get any explanatory text just to say what might be here or why we came on board, but uh, let's see. I, I did it. You hear a strange sound that reminds you of dripping water. Or the clattering of something sharp against the metal. The world will bow. Now, I don't know if I should wander through other doors with that one that's just closed on us. So let's uh, let's explore the area before we you do are that. Outdated and suboptimal. Your body has suffered deterioration and requires modification. Unknown Captain's diary. Okay, let's have a read of this. A thick diary filled with entries written in neat, precise handwriting. Its author was documenting the events of his life, with thoroughness bordering on obsession. After browsing through its pages, the following entries catch your attention. Exodus 1, Watch 1. Never thought this day would come. I'm addressed as Master Captain once more. How many times did I swear never to venture into the void again during those two Terran years I spent among the mangled ruins of the unheralded Reckoning's Bridge? Unfortunately, life in a gravity well didn't bring me peace. Reverend Hieronymus promised me that performing a selfless feat of devotion would bring me serenity. Maybe he's right, but I'm still writing in this journal during the long nights to keep my sanity. Just like I did for two years. Uh, there... Okay, I'm not quite sure. Two years there and seven Terran years after that here. I, I don't understand the how that's passed, that sentence. We'll see if I'll be able to live without the somewhere that is our Void Wanderer's destination. Okay. The crew has reported hearing strange noises from the ventilation shafts for a third time. Alas, I'm charged with pilgrims, not seasoned voidsmen. The venture scares them, and they've already managed to make up their share of absurd ghost stories. I asked Reverend Gravick to calm them down. He's the official head of the pilgrimage, so they ought to listen to him. Uh, the vent inspection is finished. Just as expected, there was nothing to worry about, just some torn tubing striking the hull. Reverend Hieronymus was wrong. Faith does not bring me peace. I prefer not to take any sides in the theological dispute that has broken out aboard our vessel, ignoring the debates altogether. I'll let Reverend Gravick handle it. I'm slightly concerned about this schism, but as long as both groups are peaceful and agree to follow my orders, they can bicker and shout all they want. The great day has arrived. The Void Wanderer has successfully landed on the planet's surface. I wonder if it'll ever leave it. The settlement is already being built down the hill. Its official colonial designation is A... III-649 Manoris, but Reverend Gravick said he's going to name it Jezevon. When we first stepped onto the surface, Reverend Gravick's congregation and the nourishers used different airlocks to leave the vessel. Seems like they've ceased any and all communication. Today, the last pilgrims left the Wanderer for Jezevon. I'm alone once again. They invited me to go with them, but I made up an excuse about needing to keep watch at the reactor since my ship is still being used for powering the settlement. Truth be told, I just didn't want to go with them. They say less than a thousand pilgrims are still loyal to Gravik. The services at the main temple are performed by the nourishers, and the St. Drusus statue is cut only up to its knees. I can't understand their beliefs, but I don't think they will help me more than Reverend Hieronymus's faith. I was awoken in the night by a dozen pilgrims from Jezevan. They were armed and scared and said the nourishers had arrested Reverend Gravik. They were bewildered and didn't know what to do, wanting me to act, so I did. Since Reverend Gravick is the official head of the pilgrimage, I deemed this an incident of civil unrest. I cut power to Jezevan and demanded Reverend Gravick's release via Vonk Voxcom. We are holding the line. The nourishers have come to us. Gravick was with them. He was calm and said that the conflict had been resolved. He took the confused pilgrims and their guns with him, and I restored power to the settlement. I have no idea what's going on. Peace. The Watch is of no consequence. Today I received the brotherly kiss, and now I believe. I can clearly see the spiral path among the stars set for us by the Emperor Progenitor. Now I can hear my brothers and sisters. I'm finally alone no more. Something's happened to them, hasn't it? They've been maybe corrupted by chaos or something like that. Uh, funnily enough, I've grown rather attached Generally to what happens, thing. isn't it? Have patience. Someone will shoot me any minute now, and then you'll have your chance to upgrade me. Hmm, okay, we've got another door here. I don't quite... Since that one slammed shut on me, I don't quite trust these doors, but I guess we shall see. Are they going to slam shut behind me? No. Okay. Ooh, okay. Got a strength check. Who thought that was a good idea? 
I don't know, Avalard, but, uh, yeah. That's not what strength we needed, because he only had a 35% chance of actually doing it. See? Right there. Yeah, that's that room. Oh. The metal box is brutally forced open. Why would the ship's owners break into it if they could simply turn the key? Can we... I don't think we can loot it. I think it's just to be, to be examined. The Hello. world trembles beneath my feet. Vox Cleric. Hunched over the Vox caster, the hooded man mutters monotonous, monotonously but emphatically into the microphone as he rocks slightly to and fro. Uh, in the light of distant stars, our Emperor Progenitor wanders wearily. With thoughts and visions of us, he sends us particles of his light. Though his body suffers, his mind lingers on us. Let us therefore nourish him with the light of our souls, with our prayers, with our faith. The faithful worship the Emperor under a great many names and after a great many fashions, and yet, I do not like this prayer. Praise the Emperor! Greetings, priest! The man falls silent. After a pause, he said, says, Praise our progenitor. With a pale hand, he throws back his hood. You see an ugly face with a wide, flat nose, disproportionately large brow ridges, irisless eyes with enormous pupils, a wide, toad-like mouth, and skin that transitioned to purple scales on the cheekbones. Zoomed in as much as I can. Standing before you is an ab abominable subhuman, a mutant. Welcome to the abode of the nourishers. Our Xenos law gives us a 70% chance, so I'll do that. Success. This being's nature is strayed too far from mankind's blessed genome. The creed sees no humanity in deviations like these, and so, it's, and so it commands that such creatures be exterminated without mercy. Who are you? The man smiles the broadest smiles his abominable mouth can produce. I am Lecocte. Clamavus of the nourishers of the afflicted. I am he who speaks to our progenitor. This ship belongs to me. Uh, what was that you were muttering? A prayer? I was praising the Emperor Progenitor so that my brothers and sisters might repeat the sacred words with me. Under stars unknown, he keeps his vigil and he sends us his light. He is exhausted and maimed, but in his graciousness he does not allow himself to forget us. And we are grateful. We know that our prayers will quell his agonizing hunger, and therefore we speak to him. We beckon him so that one day he and his faithful may come to take us under his care. The man rocks gently in place as he makes his speech. Cassia begins to rock to and fro ever so slightly in sync with the man. Purple. Everything is purple. I can see. Is there anybody else here, your brothers and sisters? The man responds with joyful laughter. They are here. They are hiding, waiting. Once we were many, now we are but few. Our blood degenerated, our flesh grew weak. We were on the verge of death, but you have come and that is good. You and your people will infuse our blood with a new power. Your ship will take the nourishers to new worlds. We will rise again. Do you mean our god, the master of terror who sits atop the golden throne? Or the blasphemous petty deity of whatever cult you're in? I know no god but the emperor progenitor. Others are either figments or ephemeral fleshless spirits. Do you believe in the God Emperor, the protector of mankind who dwells on holy terror? Make your answer forthright and clear, for I stand before you as his chosen servant, and this rogue trader has been anointed by him. The man's only response is a mocking grin. I see. A blasphemer. I understand this to be a trap, am I correct? Indeed, afflicted one. You have nowhere to run. The mutant shrieks, grinning. May the grace of our progenitor be upon you! His words are piercing, becoming a shrill echo of a hundred voices? Minds? Growing ever louder, it torments your mind, and before you know it, you reach for your weapon. Ah! Kronk. Oh, he's dead. You hear a clanging echo growing louder in the empty modules, like hundreds of clawed, striking bulkheads and grabbing onto bars. Clawed, striking, and grabbing onto bars? Okay. Whoever is advancing upon you, there are a lot of them. You ought to run for your life before they trap you in this crammed Vox cabin. Argenta's expression brightens. Countless foes in a cumbersome position. Oh, Emperor, I thank thee for giving us another chance to taste the sweetness of battle and the solemn joy of courageous deeds. Sister, I fear we're about to partake of something quite different. Or more likely, someone is about to partake of us. Uh, make a dash for the Vox caster and try to contact the ship. 
The vox spits out a torrent of static through which you nonetheless manage to catch fragments of words spoken by a voice not unlike that of your vox master. Bon volant, command, lock. The signal is lost before you manage to say anything. Okay. Well, we're going to have company. My aspirations transcend Not what I wanted to do. I thought they would. Is there anything to be gained from that? Uh, nothing particularly useful. Did I just... Dip those things in cargo while we're here. Goods. What have we got? We got a heavy stubber. Okay, it's a... Uh, like a heavy sniper... Is that a sniper rifle? No, I mean, it's got a decent rate of fire. Like, it's like a light machine gun, isn't it? Uh, so... Three to five. Okay, well, well, we'll take it and we'll compare it to what Argenta's currently armed with, I think. Uh, so compared to the heavy bolter, which does more damage, more armor pen, uh, lower rate of fire, the heavy bolter, I mean. Uh, but the heavy bolter's got more range and more ammo, and I don't necessarily see a benefit of using that. A higher rate of fire, I suppose, but I like the heavy bolter. I mean, we won't, I won't get rid of it right now, but... Uh... And compared to, well, no, I mean, I've specced into bolters as well. I th I think I'm not going to equip that. Oh, we'll hang on to it for now in case we get the urge to test it out. Intriguing. Well, we're going to have some fights. Oh, what we got? What we got? I oh, hello. Power. What are you? Oh, people mentioned the gene stealers. Ah, so these are, as I understand it, they were influenced a little bit by the um, Xenomorphs in Alien. Um, but these are kind of guys that, well, I mean, someone in the comments, I'm sure, can explain the lore a lot better than I. But I understand they uh, they sort of inhabit old hulks and stuff in space, and they're quite nasty. Let's see. A lot of hit points, obviously. Bestial Rage. Whenever an enemy de attack deals damage to this creature, greater than 15% of the creature's maximum wounds, so that would have to be in the 30s, wouldn't it? This creature gains five weapons, skill, and strength. Oh, right, so you don't want to... You don't want to do too much damage in a single strike to this, then. The creature's armor depends on its wounds, so... Okay, so its armor drops as it takes damage. Also, it always suffers plus 20% toxic and fire damage. Well, that's convenient. Uh, bloodthirsty creature hunts for prey, but hides for one round every time damage is dealt to it. Hunts for prey, but hides for one round every time damage is dealt for it. If two or more creatures of the same kind are adjacent, the creature becomes fearless and stops hiding. I don't quite understand that. I guess we'll see it in action. Oh, okay. Well. I guess we're going to fight our first gene stealer, then. Uh, do let me know in the comments if you know. Um, I know there are a few people commenting on my videos with uh, who are more conversant in the law. So you know, let me know. Let me know about the gene stealers in the comments. I'd be interested to find out a bit more. Uh, Argenta I want to be reasonably close. Uh, early at sniper, we want back. And there's me, kind of. Uh, I'll hang out here for now. All right, let's start. So Cassia. Well, I think we want the melee I stuff am a there. navigator, not a servitor. With a rear one where earlier is. If I may. And the cover bonus is probably. Uh, probably. Mm. I'm not accustomed to being ordered around. Okay. Um. I think about Genta a go. A job for the serfs? I kind of want to see what happens when he gets damaged. So. Yeah, I need I need the two for the burst fire. So can I kind of angle it so it's not going to hit Avalard? Not really. As the okay. Emperor commands, I act. 
Yeah, I was not hiding, so that seemed okay. Faith without deeds is worthless. Alright, I'll do. Cassia. Oh, we just kind Me. of tempted to be closer to Avalon. Now, if we make it run away, you can get a swing at it. No, no, for some reason that didn't work. I am a navigator, not a skeleton. Uh, okay, well, that'll do for now. Eerily, yeah. Well, obviously, we're gonna hammer this thing. Uh, where's Mark? Yeah, Mark is prey. I understand your intent. Uh. really applicable. I mean, it's a free attack, to be fair. But it, well, it does cost us AP. Uh, we'll, we'll do probably that. Doesn't have cover. Put an exploit on it, perhaps. Uh, so... Where's my piercing? This helium is beneath me. <sighs> no weakness is here. Forty five, set it on fire. <laughs> Not bad. Alright, let's just move just into this designate cover. a target. That's it going off to hide, I assume. I th I kind of wondered if it might just disappear, but actually it's run out this way. Hang on a minute, did, that, did it heal? Okay. Um, Guided well. by faith. Genta's gonna have a little go here. Uh, what should we do? Doubt is for the weak. And there it goes. <laughs> uh, oh, there's another one. Huh. Oh, that's going next. Okay, well, we need to... Argenta needs to hustle then. I will bathe this battlefield in righteous fury. Still shoot it. As the it. Emperor commands, I act. Oh, but let's move her back again as much as we can. I'll do it. Oh, we're being hunted. Interesting. Hey, Abelard, though. Let's see what you can do about this. Tried and tested tactics are the best ones. All right then. Um. Do a freebie attack. And it would have sworn enemy. Indeed. Let's do a fainting attack. Oh, I should probably open another thing up there, seeing as the your, back hit disappeared. Okay, that looks pretty good. And what else can we do? I think we hit it and then it endure. Will be done. Hair, sure hair. 44. Next an attack with the current weapon against an enemy cannot miss and deals 50% more damage. Also deals additional damage equal to 25% of the target's missing wounds. Uh, which is almost 100. Assassin's doubled. Okay, we'll buy this one. Same thing, but. Yeah, we'll give this a go then. Uh, right, no what matter the cost. 106, there we go. Right, I will endure, I think. Right, 
Dahlia now. Well, these things, uh, they don't like being on fire. We know that much. Okay, hang on a sec. So... We'll definitely do that. We'll do that now. I don't need to set on fire. It is on fire. Um, but let's do this. I will triumph. Okay. Pretty good. But Pascal. Activate calculated fury algorithm. Right, so we'll probably because we'll do a single target attack as uh, Abelard's in there. Ah, uh, but let's do this. My vow is to serve. Weakness on there. Yeah, the it's easy to hit. Uh, do that. from this angle then. Four. Running by Eric Override. Combat is 102, in not bad. We got two health left. Yeah. I couldn't I couldn't swap these around, so I don't think that's ever gonna work for him, this Death Whisper. Ah uh, that's done. And that was me again. Okay. Uh it's not gonna take much, is it? Uh, why don't we try our psychic scream then? Ruin beckons. I've got another one up here. It's going to take a little while to get to us. Um. Yeah, that's okay. The navigator is coming. I'm going to want to hold the line with Abelard. Let's give him a melee thing there. Can I entice that creature here? Me? If you insist, Lord Captain. Oh, I can. If I may. Can we do to it? Me, if you insist, Lord Captain. No, nope, that's not done anything. Uh, extra go to Dahlia. I can set it on fire. I expect. Oh, no, I can't. Okay, is that just oh, okay? Uh. I guess I don't have line of... It looks like I should have line of sight to it, but obviously I don't. Uh, I'll just give that to Abelard. Yeah, no line of sight, unfortunately. Okay. Uh... Probably means I can't mark it either. One step that. closer. Alright. Well, early it's obviously gonna have to a bit closer. But that's saying she's got line I of sight to it from now. I'm a little confused position. as to why Dahlia didn't. Yeah, she can hit it. So what's this? Simultaneous number of attacks make equal to number. Okay, well that's not a very good one for her to use now, is it? Um, so why don't we put all those on? I am not your Xenos pet monkey. If it those serves on. your cause. Market is prey. 
Uh, right, she's got one more AP she can use. Piercing shot. I am not your. Nice. On fire again. Uh. Hello. Magenta's back. Rejoice in battle. Right, so Concentrate fire. Faith without attack. deeds is worthless. One AP wildfire, it. take it. Uh, okay, well, I guess we just shoot him now. As the Emperor commands, I act. Wow. Is that it? I think that was it. Cool, that was fun. I uh, don't think they've left anything. Might still find more. Should be. The ventilation system still works. There are strange gouges on the metal. They look like the sharp claws of some beast that was trying to crawl into the shaft. Uh, we've got a demolitions thing. I better myself through my service. Storeroom here. I tread a path unexplored. Okay, got some consumables. Uh powers there? unseen uncover I think my that was path. It. Okay, let's go this way. So have we explored the whole thing? Okay, that was where I couldn't get into. I thought I explored I thought I looted the Vox Cleric. Embrace true power. I think we go let's go back to the Vox Cleric then. I thought I looted him. It's a shame we can't get to this any other way. Oh well, needed a very strong character to do that, and we didn't have one. Uh, yeah, I, I got everything. Oh, what's this? <clears throat> the book contains the blasphemous tenets of the cult of the nourishers of the afflicted. It speaks of the insatiable emperor progenitor and his impending coming that will bestow miraculous unity upon all the faithful. Right. Take that then. Cool. All right. Let's head back. Gene stealers, eh? Interesting. I enjoyed that fight. I mean, we absolutely dominated them, but I think if they'd attacked all in one group, it would have been a different story. Oh, I need to check the colony stuff as well. I forgot to do that in the last episode. Well, we got seven, seven plasteel. Yeah, we'll take that, because I should be getting the extractium soon. Uh, let's go to colony manager. That's cargo manager. <clears throat> so, Foulstone. Um, oh, a shrine. Hello. Blocks in Drusus's footsteps and crusade. Okay, what do we get? We got a hammer of epiphany. Yeah, the profit factor's good. That's all good stuff. What's this stuff? So, accuser of sin. The charge ability grants additional damage equal to the wearer's willpower bonus. Eh. Don't, yeah, Abelard's the only one who can use that, and he hasn't got very much of that. Uh, what about the Crusade? Ah, uh, yeah, we can't. We can't actually do that then. Wow, that would have been good. These would have been good things. I should have known about this. Damn it. Oh well. Don't cry over spilt milk. Um, well, we'll do this then. Yeah. Okay, uh, have a gamma. <clears throat> there we go. Ten of those. Um... Okay, so we've got a couple of possibles. Just check they don't block anything. I the ship gains the metal of metal feature. 
Servitors have no feelings, but they serve, blah, blah, blah. So it's basically um, plus 20 hull integrity, which is pretty nice. Plus profit factor. Okay, but it doesn't block anything that, so that's good. This blocks flawless servitors. Uh, we gain plus 10 tech use. That's not too bad. Plus security on the colonies. Uh, yeah, I mean, we'll obviously do this one. There's no, no downsides to that at all. Janus, okay. Your ladyship, there are alarming reports coming from Janus. A number of strange mutations have been spotted among the population in remote agri-complexes. Aside from the obvious disfigurement and the subsequent estrangement, these mutants, called wretches by the rest of the colonists, are coming together to practice a primitive form of religion involving ritual worship of the land. While they display no disobedience or hostility, their very existence is concerning. The Janus nobility humbly awaits your decision. Okay, what do we know about them? These mutations cause the loss of skin pigment and the shedding of hair. The eyes of some have started developing a nictitating membrane similar to that of reptiles. Others succumb to progressive atrophy of the larynx, causing loss of human speech. At the same time, their tendons became denser and more elastic, providing increased endurance and load resistance. The wretches are commonly ostracized due to their grotesque appearance. There haven't been too many cases of mob justice yet, but they will become commonplace after the mutation's deformities become more obvious. The wretches tend to form groups with similarly afflicted people. Their average intelligence is low. They all belong to the labor caste and communicate among themselves using a primitive vernacular of their own invention. As for their barbaric religion, they are deifying both the soil and Janus itself. To them, working in agri-complexes is a form of worship, which has had a positive impact on productivity. What do my advisors say? I saw your agent's picture recordings, the signs that these Monke leave behind, their idols, and I cannot deny a pathetic, though extremely abstract connection to the symbols of my people. Their guttural prayers echo the sounds of the children of Azurian speech. The probability of them having come into such close contact with our civilization is non-existent, yet they are still somehow connected. Protect these people, resettle them to distant abodes where they will not be harmed for their peculiarities, and keep watch. Someday the truth may be revealed. The blessed sanction of the Imperium does not grace these mutants, but nor does it declare their existence anathema. Should we sentence them without further study? There are mutants whose existence is fully sanctioned, such as Ogrins, Rattlings, Pariahs, Pelagas, Felonids, or Troths. Our library had many treatises on their genitor's craft, and I could impart some of that knowledge to your servants. Pilly the uh, theoretical, of course. This mutation has not been properly studied and is missing from the catalogue. I am not registering a basis for delaying the commencement of immediate genetic purification. I recommend launching a thorough investigation into the genetic makeup of this forbidden strain. Do this one. Resettle the wretches into separate agri-complexes where the crowds will not tear them apart. We will study them. I feel these monkey have been touched by something wondrous. The mutants were resettled to distant agri-complexes where their unorthodox appearance will not put them in danger of being massacred by the serfs. The mutants were put under surveillance. One of the watchmen spotted a mysterious relic in the hands of a group of wretches that turned out to be an item of Xeno origin. It is unlikely the mutants understood the nature of the object they worshipped. Uh, okay, so we got Starblight, Drakari Weapon Proficiency. It's a... Well, it kind of looks like a sniper rifle, actually. We'll see how that measures up to what uh, Iriliet's currently using. And we can get something else going. Uh, so what have we got? So we've got the Reaping. Uh, profit Factor 1, Provisions 5. That doesn't seem to be any downsides to that. Secrets of the Winter Scales. Uh, new Contract resources. Again, nothing gets locked out. Uh, Eyes of Joyous. Sire ratings increased by one against demons and for each rank of dogmatic. That would put my Sire rating up a little bit. That would be really good for us, actually. Uh, blocks Rose of Zamakand. Uh, which I'm not that fussed about, I think. 
Dark Sages blocks Capella Biologist, which is this one. We gain the Advice of the Dark Sages feature. More damage to Xenos. Um... Okay, well, let's not do those right now. I quite like this, though. Reputation blocks Ringer. And what does that lead to further on? Ah... Uh... Overly fussed by that. Or that. Hmm. Pretty good. We must be we must have completed Capella Biologists. Which means I can't do Dark Sages, which I'm not that fussed about. Uh okay. Okay, so we won't worry about this one, and that's fine. But the rest are kind of open for us to do. So, yeah, let's do this. I can't get anything else going yet, can I? All right. Good, 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 good. Okay, that was good. Uh, let's uh, investigate these other wells then. Two plus steel. We won't bother with that. It's not enough for me to really worry about. Be a good planet. Ooh. A small planet gently wrapped in amber forests greets you with a ruby-coloured dawn. Basil von dem Kleark, the local governor, gives the rogue trader a warm welcome. After several glasses of Damascene, the sweltering ruler asks if Dahlia von Brunicus von Valencius would like to keep him company during the upcoming hunt. Yeah, go on then. After several hours of riding the local peculiar animals, you make camp in the middle of a golden forest. Basil von dem Kleark points at the sky. A flat disk rises over the horizon, constantly morphing its colour and shape. The forest grows silent and empty. You can no longer hear the singing of birds or even the rustle of wind. The governor nods with satisfaction and a few shapes step into the clearing. Their bodies are twisted by an unknown phenomenon, and you watch the freaks with astonishment as they begin to dance to the throaty cackling of their brethren turning the bony growths and pulsating flesh of their scaly hands towards the unnatural thing in the sky. Uh, what's going on? The governor smiles coyly. You're about to see with your own eyes what is happening here. Alright, well, let's watch in silence. The hypnotic dance seemed to continue forever. The unfortunate creatures howled, whined, and convulsed, unable to tear their bleeding eyes from the celestial body. When the pavanine disc outshone even the light of the local star, the physical shells of the things that used to be men burst, releasing beasts onto this plane that not even the most fluent and capable pen could describe. Basil von dem Kleok excitedly explains that the creatures you saw are the children of the great king of distortion. It is he who is the true god and patron of these fertile grounds. Once every cycle his chariot shines its light upon the world and bestows the transformations upon his most ardent followers. The rogue trader may become one of his heralds. Ah. Uh. What? <laughs> um, execute the governor on the spot. <laughs> uh, the governor's head separates from his neck with a distinctive squelch. Black and brown blood seeps into the soil beneath his corpulent body and is immediately transformed into a writhing tangle of worms that burrow deep into the ground with unnatural speed. You return to the ship pondering what to do with the world, and more importantly, what to do with the King of Distortion. Order that the crew chart a course to the anomaly known as the King of Distortion. The senior officers observe suspicious activity emanating from the twisted celestial body at the heart of the system. The chaplain advises you to get ready for a potential encounter with Spawn of the Archenemy, so it may be wise to reconsider unless you have holy relics, sacred wards, or blessed effigies of the Emperor. A flame with a plethora of colours, the distorted celestial disc trembles slightly beyond the endless windows on the captain's bridge as the rogue trader approaches its centre. An otherworldly voice, cold and enveloping, enters your mind. What could this puny wretch possibly offer a king? Oh, taking some damage. Oh, the officers on the bridge look around perplexed. Their eyes are full of terror and confusion. Many clutch their heads and let out long howls of pain. Some empty their stomachs. But most, pale exhausted though they are, have joined the Lord Captain in resisting the Entity's influence. 
ask who we're talking to. An endless flow of images fills your consciousness. You see horrifying scenes of millions of tortured souls. Their screams rend your mind. Their pain pierces you with a thousand red-hot needles. King. Ruler. The one who is obeyed. That's all you can make sense of, although you see much more. Command it to release the minds from its grip. The king's mocking laughter rings in your ears and a deep red trickle runs slowly from your nose and over your lips, leaving an aftertaste of salt and metal. Attack the entity with every cannon on board. How dare you disturb the king with trifles. The entity is furious and you feel a gust of invisible wind blow a thousand blades right through your ship. Officers are collapsing at your feet, choking, and hundreds of casualties are being reported from every deck. A resonant silence descends on the ship, and a bright flash stuns you for what could be any length of time. Oh. Are we going to be in a... like a ship battle maybe against it? No. It's just gone. Is it gone? There was something... wasn't that the planet we were on? Uh... Had I done this anomaly? Can't remember. Uh. Okay. Oh, hang on a minute. We've been here. We have we been teleported to a different part of the galaxy? I feel like we might have been. Yeah, I've been here. The world trembles beneath my feet. Yeah, there's nothing there's nothing really here. Alright. Goodness only knows where this system is. Okay. Uh, so where were we, and where are we? Okay, so we were... Uh, we've come from there, and we're now here. Uh, okay, we're quite near the Furibundus system. I mean... Just wondering if I do a, a, new, a, new, ch a new system over there. I kind of want to... I might have to save it to go up there is the only thing. Well, probably not. Alright, let's do it. Use all my stuff to make it safer. Okay, chart new routes. Give me some more. We could bring that down a level as well, which we will do. I'm going to travel over there now. Enemies of humanity have been spotted aboard the ship. Warp beasts have enthralled the crew in charge of one of the macro cannons and massacred those who resisted the heresy. The Lord Captain is their only hope. Uh, they can do it themselves. Chant new roots here. This one. All right. Well, let's let's uh, let's go in here. Unknown ships there. Let's give them a little berth for now. Let's uh, Euphrates two. Why do I know that? Someone's mentioned that. I'm not sure who. Might have been Cassia. One Plasteel, yeah, we're not going to worry about that. Yeah, likewise. Hmm. Not a lot of interest in this system. What about Euphrates? 
This is the forge world Euphrates II. It belongs to the explorators of the Cognizance fleet. They colonized it centuries ago. Unfortunately, we do not possess the privilege of landing here. Uh, why not? This world is declared off limits to the laity due to the sacred rites of the Adeptus Mechanicus being performed on its surface. I'm afraid the restriction applies even to your ladyship. What kind of, what kind of secrets are they hiding? Rumors say the servants of the Omnissire are calculating the formula of ultimate destruction in the secluded tech crypts of this world, seeking to confine it to a rigid system of previously unseen weapon primers. Others whisper that the local denizens have dedicated their lives to the restoration of a ruined divine weapon from the Dark Age of Technology, whose power and technological perfection is so holy that a mere glance from a layman would be an affront to the Omnissire. Yeah, well, let's not disturb them then. Uh, well, we've got some unknown ships. I guess we quick save and then go and check that out. Although, I could probably repair first. Yeah. You're facing several Eldari scout ships. The Xenos are in no hurry to attack and time seems to have slowed down. One wrong move and carnage will ensue. Uh, we can ask Irelia to help us. Let's do that. Succeed. Eriliet's speech has met with a torrent of Eldari abuse that is too much even for your elucidator. The Xenos accuse her of betraying her kind by conspiring with the Monke and unceremoniously cut the connection. Yet, their ships are no longer blocking the way. Okay. Very boring system in the end. I was curious about it though. Let's go back to Frozen Prince. A warp breach. Ungodly fiends spreading sorcerous disease walk the lower decks, gathering a cohort of infected voidsmen. No measures are taken immediately, an entire bay could be turned into a den of heresy. Alright, well, let's go let's go and deal with this personally. There we go. Okay, well, let's just let's just get going. Cultist of Nurgle, we've got. Uh, what about this way? We share a bond, oh, right. But I will some down here as well. Your won't save you. Where are the big boys at? Plague bearer? Uh, I don't think it's unduly concerning, honestly. I assume these guys are in the fight as well. Okay, well, let's split the party because I don't think it's going to be too troublesome. Famous last words, huh? All right, well, let's have Abelard. Uh... Oh, well, there. Chenta can pretty much hold the line on her own. Stick her there with, say, Pascal. Oh, <laughs> that's not what I meant to do. All right, Cassia, anyway. Um... Well, we've got the peeps up there. Let's just bring her out here. Okay, so this is where everyone is. I am a navigator. Accustomed to being ordered around. Ah, my ears are Why is he attacking us? Oh, that massively backfired. Uh, if I may, try to die with grace at least. Caught in the crossfire. Oh, they like these grenades, don't they? Hey, well, 
It's a shame to waste a big attack on him. Um, so let's do a wildfire. We'll just. It's going to use up all movement. She might be able to shoot this guy, though. The enemies of the Emperor will be undone! As the Emperor commands, I act. Doing more damage to themselves than we are. Uh, let's put a plague bear. I wonder if we can hit him. I reckon she can Swift from here. Alright, good enough for me. Uh, let's mark him as prey. If I must. Let's. I understand your intent. Some of that. And then we'll shoot. This tedium is beneath me. Ancestors guide me. Too bad. Pascal. I'll probably try and do a similar thing with him. It's gotta be here. on the wrong side. Request approved. That's better. Running by The Omnissiah knows all. Comprehends all. Mm, I think we just go with that then. Uh... Four. The scriptural successfully terminated. Yes. Ugh, just a minor setback. Let's use the freebie on this guy. He's only got a couple of hit points. I took care of this one. Uh, where are the others? Two here. Well, oh, let's come here and then we'll do our sort of run at them, attack, charge, whatever it's called. I will do my duty. I've suffered worse. Uh, on this one. I think we're done on this side of the room now. Uh, so thanks, Avalard. Dahlia. My resolve is unshaken. What have we got? There's a plague bearer down there. If I can get something on him, that'd be quite good. Okay, we can do. I'll just I do this try. first. Whispers, guide my hand. Yeah, that works. <laughs> that works all right. Uh. We've got, we've got three left. Where are they? Where are they? There's one there. There's one near me. And who am I missing? Maybe there's one. Maybe there is still one over this side. Oh yeah, there's one down there. All right. Well, I think I'll just set him on fire. Yeah, that'll do. Oh, I've got another go. Uh. Set you on. This is oh, beneath me. That's not what I meant. Set you on fire again. So it's just this one dude down here now, isn't it? Be careful not to cross my gaze. Another 
That'll do it. There's Argenta versus this guy. Well, I don't fancy his chances. Faith without deeds is worthless. I refuse. Don't need to do anything too complicated for this. Yeah, get the loot, I suppose. It's probably nothing earth shattering, but it'll fill a bit of cargo. Frozen Prince. I'm curious about this one as well. Uh, okay. Five from Ethium. How are we doing? 13? Yeah, okay. I'll put one down there. Ooh, another one of these. I'm actually going to back out of that and maybe leave that to next time. But let's explore the other planets first and then we'll come back to that. Two plus steel. Nah. Nada. Two plus steel. No, we'll save that. Now, in terms of the colony management, is anything. Oh. Oh, an incredible find has been made on Foulstone, Lord Captain. A lost volume of Saint Saphas's lost diary has been found during the restoration of his crypt. According to his records, the members of the Order of the Hammer were able to find the crypto ark containing a relic of Saint Cognatius, the Crucible. Cephas's writings on it are vague. It is called the Sculptor and Transformer, granting life and grace. The explorators have sent a delegation claiming the treasure. The heated dispute has been going on for oh, many days. All right, well, what's the meaning of the dispute? Well, the tech priests claim that the privileges of the Adeptus Mechanicus obliged the Order of the Hammer to hand any sacred archaea tech over to them. Allegedly, the Crucible should be considered not as the personal belonging of the saint, but rather as a temporary possession entrusted into his care. The Order of the Hammer rejects this thesis, insisting that the right to care for these sacred objects belongs to the Ecclesiarchy's cults. Since Cognathius was canonized, then the Crucible should be regarded as a blessed relic, not, not archaeotech. How fierce the deliberations? Well, quite. Quite fierce. The discussions have been happening now for more than eight cycles without interruption. Both sides have provided more than a hundred legal experts and have put forward around 4,000 theses, arguments and testimonies. The Special Administratum Commission, comprised of 200 armed clerks, has arrived to pass a verdict and enforce the law. This is probably the largest religious dispute in Expanse's history. Wow. Pastor Tycon is advocating for the doctrine of cooperation, sorry, co-protection, and the explorator's intransigence grows ever weaker. Perhaps they will agree on a compromise. What say my companions? It is likely that the research contained in the ancient treatises and archival repositories of the Adeptus Mechanicus will prove factual information, provide factual information on similar precedent. I can spare some of my computing power to find such a case and provide my brothers and sisters with the information that is necessary to win this dispute. I believe that the chronicles of the Amalinian Conclave describe mystical miracles witnessed by zealots while praying at an ancient banner of St. Capius. Should the Crucible perform a sim similar miracle, then no doubts will remain that it is indeed a holy relic and not the property of the Adeptus Mechanicus. Jorin, do you know the best motivation to make your enemies ripe for the compromise? The danger of losing any sort of benefit? 
It is within your power to take the crucible for yourself, using the privilege of your warrant, if you so desire. Why do you not, why do you not imply such a possibility to the parties involved? Well, I don't really like Pascal's choice. I'm tempted to go for Cassier, even though it's only a coin flip. Failed. Now I feel uneasy at the thought that I've become mastermind of this deceit. After some time, the Crucible revealed a visual miracle to the enthusiastic spectators, presenting to those gathered for the debate sacred images of martyrs blessing the ancient artifact. And even though some witnesses claim to have caught a glimpse of some strange people operating the lens machines, most of those present have admitted the fact of this miracle and the status of the Crucible as a relic. The outcome of the dispute angered the followers of the Adeptus Mechanicus. The explorators feel that any decision which favours the Order of the Hammer should be recorded as a violation of the sacred privileges of Mars, and that this fact should be taken into account during any further interactions among the involved parties. Research into the Crucible has identified it as a device for surface terraforming. Fueled by geothermal energy of the planet, it could turn a wasteland into a blooming garden. However, a way to launch it is yet to be found. Ooh... Okay, pretty cool. I mean, I don't know about the hammer, honestly, but I'll take it. I'll have a look at it in a bit more detail. But what else could we build? Uh, nothing currently. I mean, we'll see if other stuff opens up, but at the moment, that's kind of looks... It's looking maxed out to me. You have a gamma. Uh... I guess we've got this one. All the servitors. You get battle servitors. In ship encounters, the Rogue Trader's squad is supported by friendly combat. I don't really, I'm not really that bothered about that, to be honest. Um, it does do profit factor, though. I'm not sure on that yet. I'm going to actually... Am I blocked? Am I blocked from this? Not sure. I might just be that I don't have that. I'll, I'll wait on that. I'm not. I'm not ready to commit to this one. I don't think. Uh, Janus, we've oh, we've got the the helmet I wanted. That's cool. So to remind ourselves against demons, uh, and for each rank of dogmatic, I gain plus one psi rating, which sounds. Really good. I, yeah. What else could we do here? No, ca Capella Biologist is the one that I want, but it'll be a while before I can do it. So we could do the reaping, get more profit factor. So Plasteel at the moment is 30, so it, this is going to go down, isn't it? So I'm still not entirely sure if these are kind of used up when you do a project, but or if it's just a, a milestone thing you've got to reach. But let's see. So that should be that should stick, go to thirty. If well, I guess we'll see what will happen when it's been uh, completed. So this efficiency needs to go higher. It doesn't seem to, yeah. Um, all right. Uh, I actually want to equip that right now. So at the moment I got this, which is plus 10 bonus to willpower and 15% damage to psychic and navigator powers. Yeah, but it's not bad. It could be really good. It could be good on Cassia as well, actually. Um, but this, uh, actually, let's, um, what is my dogmatic rating? Two. So it's given me plus two psi rating, which seems really good. Uh, Puts it up to it should put it up to four. There we go. Which is uh, yeah impressive. I don't necessarily want my character to be wearing it at all times though. So let's just turn that off for now. Oh. Oh, that's black pack. Hang on. Okay, show off my bald magnificence. Uh, Cassia, what have you got helm wise? Yeah, we'll swap that out for this because she uses that a lot. 
she doesn't she doesn't mind about the the drop in in that stuff. She could wear the oh doesn't show up on her. Uh, oh yeah, we were going to try this out as well, weren't we? On Iliet. So it's more damage than the gun she's currently using. A bit less armor pen, less dodge reduction, but additional hit chance up a little bit. She does. She can get single shot out of it. So this wonder is poor ten. What? what? Can only perform dead eye shot attacks. However, whenever the wielder scores a critical hit, they gain an additional attack. Single shot attack. Have I have I seen that in action? I don't know that I have. I wonder if that's broken. Fix fatigued and slow. Okay. Uh, hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, let's get rid of the clave because she isn't a melee character in any sense. And we'll we'll try it out. See how it feels. Plus five toughness. Who, who might that be good on? Kinda like those on him actually. Uh who else is wearing Hmm. Not that important for him anymore. He maybe gain a bit of toughness. Yeah, that's good for her. And she can't wear them. What am I wearing? Yeah, I do quite like that. I don't think I need the toughness quite as much. Okay, so let's stop that. Let's uh, go and land on the planet. Ice world. My warp site reveals something. Hmm. Let's see, we've got traps, we've got bodies, but we'll uh, explore this next time, I think. So I'll just say thanks very much for watching this episode. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, if you could hit the thumbs up button, that'd be great. Uh, let me know in the comments as well what you thought. i um, always interested to hear them. And yeah, if you're watching this and haven't already subscribed to the channel, it'd be great if you could do that as well. So thanks very much, and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.